right, so yeah, we had a good time yesterday. We uh, served a lot of barbecue. People visited. People saw people they haven't seen in a while, gave hugs. So it was a good time, and I believe all that money is going to send youth to camp. Okay. All right, well, are we ready? Okay, so our video said that Jesus suffered anxiety too, uh, and I actually, it was interesting how it turned out. I was teaching the children on Job today, which was an interesting uh, tie-in. Uh, he had plenty of reasons to be anxious, and the amazing thing was that he chose to do right, and he chose to believe God. And so as I was studying for the children and getting ready for this, it was just pretty amazing how he made those choices and how Jesus made those choices. And so we're going to read just a couple of verses in Scripture. But it's amazing that in the midst of so much sorrow and so much anticipation of what was going to come, he made the choices to still disciple his disciples. He made the choices to still trust in the Lord and know that even if he didn't understand it, God's ways were better. And so it was amazing how Job did that. Job said, God, I don't have to understand everything. Job, Job told God, all right, explain it to me. Why is all this happening? And God said, well, let me explain something to you. And he didn't explain why all this was happening. He said, I'm going to tell you great and unsearchable things. I'm going to tell you how great I am. And he told Job some things. And he said, you know, can you send out a lightning bolt? Can you? And he gives Job this list of questions. And Job went, okay, I don't have to understand why. So let's stand and let's read. We're going to read in Matthew 26, verses 36 through 39. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Let's praise the Lord. Um, lifting our hands up to God. God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this place. We thank you for these people, uh, Lord. More than all of this, we thank you for your presence, your spirit, Lord, and for the salvation through your son, Jesus, which is the one through whom we can enjoy and endure everything that the world sends our way, God. We love and praise you. In Jesus' name. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even though I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life I won't turn back I know you are near and I will fear no evil for my 
that God is with me. And if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh, no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh, no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh, no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. And I can see light that is coming for the heart that holds on. A glorious light beyond all compare. There will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, we live to know you here on the earth, and I will fear no evil, for my God is with me, if my God is with me, whom then shall I whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. Sing, you never let go. Oh no, you never let go. Through the calm and through the storm, oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. And I can see a light that is coming for a heart that holds on. And there will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, Still I will praise you, still I will praise you, and I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on, and there will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you, still I will praise you. Lord, you never let go. Oh, no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh, no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh, no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. Lord, you never let go of me. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. En español. Cuán grande Cantele cuán grande es Dios y todos lo verán. Cuán grande es Dios. And age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead, three in 
Well, this morning, um, I am not preaching, but it is my privilege um, to welcome in some new members to this church. Dear friends, the privilege and blessings which we have within the fellowship of the church of Jesus Christ are very sacred and precious. Christ so loved the church that he gave himself for it, sanctifying himself that the church might be sanctified. He chose to speak of himself as the head of the church and of the church as his body. And again, he spoke of himself as the husband of the church as his bride. Christ gave himself unselfishly, and he asked the church to share its glorious relationship with all humankind, sending it into the world to preach the scriptures, save the lost, administer the sacraments, maintain Christian fellowship and discipline, and build up the believer until he comes again. All of us, whatever our age or position, stand in need of Christ's church and of those means of grace which it alone makes available. It is in keeping with Christ's commission to the church that we meet together now. There are some among us who testify to having been already received into the spiritual fellowship of the universal church and who desire to be received into the official and visible fellowship of this local unit of the body of Christ. If Miss Nancy and Killian would like to come up front, I told them I'd make this as quick and painless as possible. These persons standing before you come to enter into covenant as members in full relationship with the Wesleyan Church, with all of the accompanying rights, privileges, and responsibilities. They testify to having been born again. Okay, double checking. <laughs> Not that part. They testify to having been born again. They have received the sacrament of baptism, have been instructed in, and have accepted the doctrines and polity of the Wesleyan Church, and have been and <clears throat> excuse me, and have been approved as manifesting in spirit and practice God's work of grace within their hearts. Page turn. 
All right. Page turn again. All right. By coming before us today, you indicate your purpose to publicly confess the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to be your God and the object of your highest love. You accept the Lord Jesus to be your Redeemer and the Holy Spirit to be your Sanctifier, Comforter, and Guide. You joyfully declare yourselves to God that within the everlasting covenant of his grace, you might be used in his service to glorify and honor him. And you promise to hold him as the highest good of your lives, that you will give diligent attention to the commandments and principles of his word, that you will seek the honor and advancement of his kingdom, and that forsaking all ungodliness and worldly desires, you will live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present world. You do also purpose propose to join to your, <coughs> excuse me, you do also purpose to join yourselves to this church, submitting yourselves to its principles of government, and by walking in love and fellowship with all its members, seek its peace, purity, and growth in grace. Do you freely and sincerely devote yourselves to be the Lord's within the fellowship of this church? If so, say, I do. Okay. They said I do if you couldn't hear. (laughs) All right, this part is for those of you who are already members of this church. This is the charge to you. May the members of the church now join me in welcoming these new ones to our fellowship, assuring them of our love, prayers, and of our care over them in days to come. Do you, the members of this church, receive these to our communion and fellowship as beloved brothers and sisters and promise to walk with them in love, to instruct, counsel, admonish, and cherish them, and to watch over them with all long-suffering, gentleness, and love? If so, respond, we do. All right, well, and now on behalf of the Wesleyan Church and this local congregation, I extend to you the right hand of fellowship and welcome you in as members of our church. I can't shake your hand, Miss Nancy. I have to hug you. (laughs) I won't embarrass you by hugging you. (laughs) Welcome them into the church before you leave today. Um, They are officially covenant members of our church. They've been members of our church for much longer than that, but today we make it official. So welcome them before you leave and celebrate with them. My turn. It is the ever-present running gag between everybody that is in leadership and maybe not in leadership and just wants to share their opinion that if I'm preaching, it goes long. Because of that, uh, I make sure I take my ADHD medicine because that should keep me focused. Literally about uh, 30 minutes beforehand because the pill they have me on got switched and a new one just knocks me out at first when I take it. I'm like falling asleep here and I'm like, man, please, before I get up here, get to the section where it works. So given I'm not asleep and passed out, it, we got there. So hopefully I'm shorter because of that, because I'll be focused. Um, but we are continuing the He Gets Us series. And This is one of the weeks in it that has to be one of the most prevalent and comforting weeks in this. Uh, As much as everything else, at least some of you have gone through most, if not all the ones that, all right, I now know I have a Savior and a God that I can identify with because He identified with me, and you understand that. Uh, In the last few years, anxiety has skyrocketed in our nation. It's gone to levels where some of the statistical recording, they've stopped actually properly recording. And this only happens when the numbers are so high that they can't get accurate numbers anymore. Parts of this have come from stuff that Jesus said would happen, that there'd be wars, rumors of wars, and the earth will turn against us. 
And that tends to make us all a little anxious when those things happen. And then we all got to experience something that nobody who is alive in this church ever experienced before, a global pandemic. We've experienced a few epidemics uh, in everybody's lifetime here, which aren't great, but that's nowhere near as bad. And we had to deal with situations we did not know how to deal with. None of us knew how to deal with being locked up with our family for weeks straight. We all love our family, but we don't know how to do that. That's new. I've joked, but I'm also being serious. I was really glad as the pandemic was starting, I was still a firefighter, because every time that tone went off, I was like, I'm out of here. And that might sound horrible, but at the same time, we were homeschooling our kids, and I'm pretty sure Kim would have signed up for the fire department if she could have to get out of doing that part too. Our kids may be geniuses, they may be great students, they may be very compassionate people. They are not homeschoolers. Or at least right then, they were definitely not homeschoolers. But we all started to develop this level of anxiety that most of us never had before. And the main reason why it kept building is because the normal outlets you have for dealing with it were gone. Like a lot of us, one of the ways we deal with anxiety, we'll go to the gym. We'll go get a good workout on. It releases some endorphins while you do it, calms you out, you're good. Well, it's kind of hard to go to the gym when you're locked in your house. And this isn't a comment on whether this stuff was right or wrong. That's a whole different thing. I'll have that talk with you if you want, but it'd go on forever. It's just, this is what happened. We had a scenario of low information, new surroundings, and no ending in sight. And it raised the general level of anxiety for everybody. And more so, we had already situations where anxieties were high. And because of uh, how we've developed our communication to being national, we have this weird event that situations that do not directly affect us are now being fed to us, causing anxiety level reactions. Uh, if you guys don't understand what I just said, that means the 24 hour news feed will tell you a story about New York and it's focused around New York and their culture and what happened. But because you have that hammered in the news, it'll actually cause an anxiety reaction to you over here even though the situation could happen, but probably will never happen over here. Uh, it's a whole crazy thing of how our society is done, but pretty much the bottom line is anxiety overall is high, and it's been growing for a long time and a big reason why is we have not had enough sources to relieve our anxiety. We have not had ways to move through it and get somewhere else. Um, just before service, I asked Mira to go get me a prop, um, mainly because it was easier to get her to run and get a prop than have David add a graphic onto the screen at the last minute. Um, I get to be nerdy. So hopefully you can all follow me because sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. There's a superhero in the DC universe, the Green Lantern. Now his whole deal is he has special power ring. Um, if you're really old, it used to be magic. If you're not as old, it's been science-based, sort of, comic book science. The ring is, chooses its wielder based on their ability to overcome great fear. And it's a running thing that happens every now in the stories where some other character, uh, either another superhero or just a civilian, 
uh, approaches the Green Lantern and goes, I can't do what you do, I'm scared. And they point out, it's like, no, it's not that we don't have fear, it's that we can overcome fear. That's why we're chosen. That's why we get to have this ability to wield the ring. It's because we can overcome great fear. And this just popped in my mind because this is what dealing with anxiety is about. Anxiety is part of your body's natural system of understanding There is something to be fearful about. Um, To continue me being nerdy, it's essentially all of our spider senses. Or if you watch the new movies, your Peter Tingle. That was the greatest joke in those things. There's nothing wrong with being anxious. God designed the ability to be anxious. The problem comes when anxiety overwhelms you when anxiety becomes consistent, and when you cannot overcome. And this is why Jesus is such a great example in this, because he, as we look through these scriptures, overcomes anxiety in these scenarios. And I know you guys want to, we all have that in the back of our head, but yeah, it's Jesus, you got to remember, fully man, fully God. His access to all the amazing God-like abilities while on earth only came through submission to the Father. Because he wanted to show us that everything he's doing, we could do. So you don't get to do the excuse, well, he's fully God too, because, well, he made sure we could follow his example here. So let's look at the first scripture in Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 through 46. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples, found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. And when he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were weary. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. And then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. This is our first point seen from Jesus. We become anxious over what we must do. Nos volamos ansiosos por lo que debemos hacer. What's that? This, oh, I thought she was correcting me. I said something horribly wrong. This is my biggest fear as we're wading into the be, being bilingual and I'm learning that I'm going to accidentally mispronounce a word and swear it to you guys. If it ever happens, it's an accident. <laughs> didn't do it yet, but Jesus was anxious over what he had to do, and can any of us blame him? What comes next is the trial, the beating, and then the crucifixion. 
None of those scenarios are anything individually any of us would want to go through. I've gone through a midnight trial before where all sorts of false accusations have happened to me. I'm perfectly okay with never doing that again. I would have been perfectly okay never doing it the first time. I can never say I took anywhere close to a beating that Jesus took. Even the worst beating I ever took in school was, you know, there was no comparison. But if you told me it was going to happen, and do I want to go take it? No. And I have... I'm trying to think if I was ever in a passion play where I was crucified. I think I did that once. And even doing the whole, like, hanging up there, it's still hard to breathe. And you hope everybody gets through their lines quick and get you off. Because <laughs> just ropes holding you up there, that level, it gives you enough image. You, you don't want to do it. So I can completely understand Jesus praying to the Father, going, hey, if there is a plan B right now, I would like to take that. He was anxious over what he must do, and that's what we become anxious over. And sometimes it is completely valid, that anxiety. Like, Every time I do a little bit of woodworking and I have my chop saw or uh, circular saw, band saw, especially half the time because the way I'm setting it up is not meeting any OSHA codes at all. Like, it's probably amazing I have not put uh, my saws off through my leg given how I cut some things. It's right that I'm a little anxious while I'm doing that. <laughs> That is a natural sense of fear, but job still needs to be done, so I do that. I also feed Joey more meals because usually he's my counterbalance on the long piece of wood. Need to weight him down more. But there's other times where I become anxious over what I must do, and it makes absolutely no sense, serves no real purpose because I am in no real danger and it is not helpful or useful. And this week, it was a great example of it for me because uh, I did the play at SWU uh, this past spring, and so in the fall, they do a thing called Showstopper Spectacular, which is a lot more just music than it is acting. So the musical, I can swing my way through that because I'm a more actor than singer, but I was like, I wanna try this. And there was something that fit, and I was like, I can do this because I've done it before. And I put in the time and practice because I wanted to get it done right. And I get up there for the addition, and man, at the level I choked, you might as well call 911 because the Heimlich was not going to be enough. Like, it was, oh, cringe worthingly embarrassing. Like, I am amazed that who they picked uh, for being the judges on the edition to see if this would work, were able to be caring and nice. Because if I watch what I did, God has worked on me and given me a much better shepherd spirit and helped me restrain my sarcasm on a lot of stuff. But man, I would have gone full Simon Cowell on me. Like if it was uh, America's Got Talent, all the red X's would have been done. It would have been so many red X's, Terry Crews would have came out and pushed a fifth one. It was bad. And it was because my anxiety got the better of me. Since Tuesday when I did it, at home, I've redone this like three or four times. Completely can do it. Completely can sing it, completely do the dance moves. No problem whatsoever. It is completely in my memory and memorized. I did the proper practice, but the anxiety got to me. And like I said, there's no reason for it to have because there was no danger. I should have been able to overcome. And there's sometimes we can and sometimes we can't. And this is a fun example that I just gave. 
where it becomes problematic for us. There was a meeting I had to do with a complete stranger this week. If I got anxious about it, I would have lost the opportunity to pray with somebody, to comfort them, give them wisdom, give them hope. If any of my anxiety, if I let it ruled in that, there would have been a person that would have felt a little bit betrayed by the church because they knew the meeting was coming. We have, um, through He Gets Us, his program, it connects us with a thing called Glue, and pretty much the number one thing people message us about to get help with and no scriptural comfort is anxiety and loneliness. And normally, with the other questions, we're just polite and subtle. Uh, when it comes to these ones, I give my whole story to get them to understand because when your anxiety is overwhelming and it's now moved over into the frames of depression, you feel like no one understands you. So we become anxious over what we must do, but just as Jesus, we got to do it. We got to do it on all these things where we know safety is not in question. Now, the reason I'm putting that asterisk there is, you know, that typical, if your friends ask you to jump off a bridge, if you're feeling anxiety over that, it's fair to listen and maybe back off. But if you're feeling anxiety when the Holy Spirit tells you, hey, that person needs you to talk to them, that's an overcome it moment. Go do what the Holy Spirit said. And if you're just feeling anxious about stuff and you know that there is no physical danger involved, then commune with the Father just like Jesus did and find that way to step forward. And I'm going to give the asterisks here. I am talking about general levels of human anxiety here. If you have persistent, overwhelming levels of anxiety that constantly are happening, that's when you need to talk to a doctor. There may be a medical condition involved where you need treatment. I'm only putting that out there because sometimes people hear, hey, here's your spiritual thing to do it. I'm going to ignore a physical problem I have. No. If your arm's broke, you go to the doctor, you get it fixed. If your brain's broke, it's a little harder to understand that for everybody, but you still go get that fixed. But God made us both physical and spiritual. So don't just do one and not the other on either way. Second, jumping over to Luke chapter 13, verse 33 through 35. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate, I tell you. You will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is, we become anxious over what is happening around us. Nos podemos ansiosos por lo que está sucediendo a nuestro alrededor. Yeah, I know, I definitely butchered like three words there. <laughs> if you're not anxious about something that's going on right now in the world around us, I'm just going to presume you have not watched the news. Because that's about the only way that's going to happen. We have Banks collapsing all over the place. We have our government literally arguing over how to raise the debt ceiling again. 
which just amazes me because how many times can you do that? Eventually you have to pay your bills. We have people choosing to run for office that honestly I don't believe we would give them a job as a Walmart greeter. And I will leave it at that and you can make your presumptions on whoever I'm talking about. We have two wars actually going on right now and we're only talking about one of them. If you didn't know, um, man, I can't remember if it's Iran or Syria, whatever one was in a uh, civil war like three years ago, that thing didn't end. We just thought Ukraine was more important as a news story. We have oil crisis going on. Uh, technically, we are in a depression again, if you didn't know. They're just trying to hide it because they're not counting the housing market in the numbers, which previously they always did that. Uh, which is weird because I've read stories of the Great Depression and this doesn't feel like that. But every few weeks, we get another story of a mass shooting somewhere. All these things you start listening to news add up to the world can make you a little anxious. Driving on, um, oh, what's the highway to Anderson? 85, good, I had it right, I almost said 25. Driving on 85 can make you anxious because th that road is definitely by and far a place where the speed limit is a suggestion, not the rules. Unless it's the end of the month, then it's definitely the rule. <laughs> Do you guys ever change up when it's the quota time for tickets? <laughs> it's just coincidence I see so many cops in the last week. <laughs> I'm going to have a ticket on my window before I leave service. <laughs> There's stuff all around us that makes us anxious in this world. But just like Jesus gave all those things, and he said, hey, when the end times is coming, that there'll be wars, rumors of wars, there's going to be natural disasters, and all this kind of stuff. He also said, take heart, because I have overcome the world. Yeah, you should have some anxiety with all this stuff. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with anxiety. There's something wrong when it cripples you. We got some anxiety on that stuff. It's the reason why, while Mira owns a chicken farm, we bought an extra dozen just to make sure we had enough eggs. It's why I keep petitioning Kim to let me get a goat, because that goat would provide milk. She keeps saying no, though. I don't know if she doesn't like goat's milk's taste or what. I just don't have enough room over there for a cow. Somebody has a field for a cow, I'll gladly leave it there. <laughs> I ain't winning on that. She's like, we'll just do water. But there's other things that we're like, you know what? If everything goes belly up, we're taking some preparation steps. Will it? Probably not. But farm fresh eggs are still better than, you know, the bleached ones you buy at the store. with other things that happen in the world. Do I need to be crippled in my anxiety? No. Some of it, it may never actually happen to me. It's like I said, you see these news stories and you think it's going to come to you. There's a good chance it won't. There's a good chance that it already has. And you know, the whole expression, rarely does lightning strike twice. You have to balance what do you have the ability to deal with and what do you not have the ability to deal with. And when you have no ability to deal with it, that is when you let God take over. Because he's the one that's already overcome the world, so he already knows how to do it, and he can keep doing it. You just have to trust him. And at some point, yes, 
this world ends. And as much as we don't ever want to say it, at some point in time, the American empire will end as well. It's a matter of fact. I'm hoping I'm not alive when it happens because when empires end, it tends not to be pretty. But happened with the Romans, happened with the British, happened with all the other ones. Theoretically, either Jesus comes back or America ends. Comes something different. Somebody else takes over. But Jesus still reigns throughout all of this. And the last thing here, the hardest one, and this is Paul now teaching off of what Jesus did. And this is in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving present, or present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We do not have to be anxious about anything. No tenemos que estar ansios por nada. Nothing do we actually have to be anxious about. And keep in mind... The majority of Paul's letters he wrote in prison or on his way to prison. He knew he was going to die. And I forgot to check if Philippians was a jail letter or not. But even if it wasn't, everywhere Paul went, somebody wanted to kill him. He had stuff legitimately to be anxious about. And I can actually like speak to this one. We were in a church where somehow I ticked off multiple drug dealers. Still don't know how it happened. Cops let me know they were now threats in my life. I should have been very anxious during that time. I wasn't. Not in the slightest. I knew God was going to protect me. And also I had a guardian angel that was a former army rifleman that had the top marks. So I was pretty sure I was good. I wasn't anxious about that. The peace of God was over everything. When our house uh, burnt down, everybody expected us to be anxious wrecks. I think that was the most peaceful I've ever been in my life. <laughs> I don't get that. I got more anxiety about the term paper I got to write this week than I did about losing everything. <laughs> But when we take our stuff to God, and it's specific instructions here on the do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation. So whatever comes up, go into prayer, petition God, and then give thanksgiving for what you already have here and present your request to God. And here's that, the little caveat that you got to understand. Because some people read that and go, right, I do all this, and then God gives me the thing. No, 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 it says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts. So you might be super anxious because you're going for a job interview, and you take all these steps, and you don't get the job. It doesn't say you're getting the job. It says you're going to get the peace of God. Take it a little more seriously here. You might be a little nervous because everybody else is crazy driving around you on a highway. Like, go drive anywhere in Quebec after dark. It becomes Mad Max. You're going to get anxious. But take these steps. Does this mean you will not get in a car wreck? Nope. Does it mean, though, if said car wreck does happen, you will be filled with the peace of God? Yes. This is the thing. We always go to God saying, this is my specific request. 
and God, you have to answer it. And then sometimes we have this weird pettiness about us that if God doesn't answer yes to our request, then God must not be real or not caring or anything. Here's where it's important to read your scripture. It does not say here that I'm going to give it to you. It says, I am going to give you peace. And honestly, the other scripture people like to use to say, if you got a bunch of faith, God is going to give it to you. It doesn't even say that. It says, I'll give you the Holy Spirit in abundance. If you want to overcome your anxiety, prayer is where you start. Deeper prayer is where you go. That's the petitioning. That's a consistency in the prayer. Dwelling in thanksgiving is where you go to next. Um, man, I can't remember. It was only in the last week I had somebody tell me this, that if you go to sleep every night thanking God for what you already have, you will have no problem trusting him for tomorrow for what you need. You want to get rid of anxiety quick over what's going on? Start thanking God for what you already have. And the person that did it is like, literally, as I go to bed, I just start touching stuff in my house and thanking God for it as I make my way back to bed. And it changes your perspective. The peace of God is possible. And it can transcend all understanding. And honestly, from the book of Acts to Revelation and all the historical documents around that is evidence of it. Because if that peace did not happen, the church would have died on a stake. Because despite Christianity getting locked up, turned into human torches, that's not a nerd reference, being thrown into the Colosseum, it not only survived, it thrived, it exploded in numbers. Because as the empire came down on them, the Holy Spirit rose up in them, and the peace of God was more powerful. All the apostles wanted for Jesus to be the one to take down Rome, and he still was. He just took a few hundred years to make it happen because he wanted that peace to overcome the world. And if anxiety is something you're like, man, nobody gets this. Trust me, I get it. And trust me, Jesus got it. But he gave a path out. And I know it might be hard, because if you have persistent anxiety, you want to do this and go, okay, it's fixed. It's not always how it works. But if you keep doing it, keep focusing on the Holy Spirit in this, keep going to the Father, keep embracing how Jesus said to overcome the world, then your anxiety will become under his authority. And under his authority, it will be controlled. Doesn't mean it goes away. It means it's controlled. Because like I said, God gave you the gift of anxiety. It's what tells you there is danger around you. It's why when you're walking in the hills and you feel that weird feeling on the back of your neck and then you look and go, oh, there is a snake that I definitely did not see. That was God protecting you through the anxiety he gave you. But in all other situations, his peace should flow through you. Honestly, probably even on that snake thing, you want the peace because if you react badly, whew, that's a different story. So we are going to pray. We are going to pray. And as we are praying, honestly, the band's going to come up. And as we're standing, guys, I want us to do something different and lift up a chorus of prayer and just start thanking God for what he has already provided to you. And I know some of you guys are like, wait, what? You want me to talk out loud independently and stuff? Yes. And so for some of you that is stretching, for some of you that is uncomfortable, for some of you, I just spiked your anxiety as it is. But 
If Scripture says that the path to the peace is by being thankful, then let's be thankful together. And so stand and we will pray. And we're just going to give a moment where just pray out loud to God everything you're thankful for. And then I will close us and then we will lift our voices in worship. Guys, I just want you to place your hands out in a way of receiving and openness here. And God, I pray that in all situations that we face in life, that you just place our minds to the scripture in Philippians, and that we take that moment to turn to prayer, turn to petition, turn to thankfulness, and let you guide us in everything so that anxiety does not rule us, but it comes under your control to be a tool for us and that we will listen to you, doing what we must, knowing you're in control of the world and that in you, we don't have to be anxious about anything. In your blessed name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
saints and angels song. Oh, amor de Dios, brotando está, inmensurable, eterna, por la sedad es dura. Inagotable rata. Still you call me to walk on the edge of this world To spread my dreams and fly But the future's so far, my heart is so frail I'd rather stay inside, but you love me anyway. It's like nothing in life that I've ever known. Yes, you love me anyway. Oh, Lord, how you love me. Yes, you love me. It's like nothing in life that I've ever known. Yes, you love me anyway. Oh, Lord, how you love me. I am the thorn in your crown, but you love me. sweat from your brow but you love me anyway I am the nail in your wrist but you love me anyway I am Judas's kiss but you love Yes, you love me anyway. It's like nothing in life that I've ever known. Yes, you love me anyway. Oh, Lord, how you love me. Yes, you love me anyway. It's like nothing in life that I've ever known. Yes, me anyway. Oh, Lord, how you love me, how you love me, how you love me, how you love me, how you love me. Amen. Now be united with God as we are everyday missionaries in an everyday mission field. Love me anyway. It's like nothing in life.